Greetings, plonk pickers. Simon from SimonWoods.com here with three Pinot Noirs, three different countries, uh, none of them in Europe. So uh, we've got a Californian, uh, we've got a New Zealander, and we've got a South African. So let's have a give them a whirl. First one is Cycles Gladiator Pinot Noir California. Uh, I think they're all 2011 vintage. Not sure whereabouts in California, uh, but this is made by the Hahn Winery. Very sweet, jammy dodger type of character, uh, with both the jam, the baked fruit, and uh, the biscuity edge. Um, doesn't smell like it's going to have uh, the freshness and uh, life and um, knee tremble factor I want in a good Pinot, but um, let's see. Yeah, just too jammy. Um, I mean, it's perfectly pleasant, but uh, Pinot Noir should be far more than that. Um, I'd almost rather see that uh, blended with... Uh, uh, something gutsier to uh, uh, to flesh it out because I'm I'm just left with this sweet jammy finish. Hey, um, wine number two, Lay of the Land Ben Morven Farm Pinot Noir 2011 from Marlborough in New Zealand. I'd love to tell you more about this wine, but I don't know anything about it apart from what's on the back of the bottle. Um, and uh, oh, I can't get the screw cap off. Well, go on, keep come on, go on there. Oh, there you go. And this is a bit more like it. Um, perky cherry character, uh, slightly stewed cherry, uh, maybe even a little bit of cola in there. And doesn't smell like it's going to be a great wine, but smells like it's going to be honest, tasty, and um, at least a bit of freshness here. Well, I like it. It's, um, I, I, again, that cherry cola uh, character. Maybe a, bit, a little bit of black currants or something in there. Um, uh, but there's also something uh, that feels... Um, uh, yes, yeah, something of the soil there, and it doesn't feel like a, a, what I, I call typical Burgundian soil. It almost feels, I don't know whether there's any, I don't know if there's granite in Marlborough, but uh, there's something that is cool and uh, granite-like about, uh, uh, about, about the finish. Uh, I got a feeling that that is a wine that, um, what time are we now? Four o'clock. I've got a feeling that comes seven o'clock, uh, that will have just opened up quite a little bit more, and something that's, uh, that feels a little bit... Uh, restrained at the moment will be a little bit more exuberant. I I hope so because um, there's bits of it I like but bits of it I have reservations about. Let's see what wine number three is uh, going to be like whether we have reservations about the Seven Springs Pinot Noir Young Vines 1. I don't know what Young Vines 2 is but uh, it sounds like a, a sequel uh, made in 3D. Anyway Young Vines 1 2011 uh, and we are in the Overberg region. Uh, they are uh, which is down Elim, Elgin Way. I can't remember which it is, but uh, Tim will probably kick me if I get them wrong. So I'm not going to say which one it is. Well, I've been, I've been going, I've been going like this to the camera because I was, uh, um, I thought I know what I'm going to say, and then I had another sniff, and something else came out of the wine. Um, so when the first time I smelled it, I thought it smells a bit simple, and uh, I, I've tried quite a few of the Seven Springs wines the, this year, and uh, they've generally been been pretty good and I, I first sniff I thought oh it's a bit of a bit of a letdown and so I had another sniff and then a bit more fruit came out and um, so it was like strawberries plums and then had another sniff and then there was a little bit of oak but nicely balanced oak and then a few more extra layers came out I've got a feeling if I, I could probably uh, be here all night sniffing and, uh, and but I thought I better I better get it on camera and uh, anyway I better taste it hadn't I What's really good about it, it's got, there's a lightness of touch about it. Um, there are some wines that go for uh, full-bodied, medium-flavoured. Pinot Noir, for me, should be the other way around. Uh, it should be medium-bodied, full-flavoured. And here, that's what you're getting. Uh, so, yes, there are these fruit characters. If I've got a problem with the fruit characters, maybe they're just on that slightly overripe edge. Uh, so they're ve uh, veering towards the slightly stewed plums and darker edge of berries rather than the fresher red berries. Uh, but then there are these extra nuances that, uh, I mean, I, I don't know when, what, how old Young Vines is. It's probably like uh, four or five years old, maybe even uh, even younger. And it feels like there is something here that uh, is, is going to be worth having a look at. At the moment, I mean, it's my favourite of the three. Uh, at the moment, it feels like work in progress, but it um, feels like pretty nice work in progress. And as with the lay of the land, uh, I've got a feeling that in a two or three hours' time, There'll be uh, uh, far more pleasure to be had than there at Ace Romance at the moment. Not that it is unpleasurable, but uh, just that, uh, I mean, I think they, they actually say on the back, uh, blah, 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 uh, decant, open the bottle at least an hour before drinking. Um, when you say they say open the bottle, 
And people say, oh, I've opened the bottle to let it breathe. That's not breathing. That's just a something sitting there with its mouth open. If you want to let it breathe, get a jug and shove it in a jug or just get another bottle and pour it into another bottle. And uh, uh, that way the wine will it'll loosen up. And uh, it just as when I, you know, I, I, I was swirling and, uh, uh, and more and more kept coming out with each swirl. That's um, give your wines a chance. They, uh, they deserve it. The good ones will get better. The bad ones will often get worse, but uh, it's the test of a metal of a wine. Hey, I'd better shut up. See you soon.